Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama, welcome to our podcast. Today we're talking about the critically acclaimed animated Marvel movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The spectacular animated film follows Miles Morales as he first becomes Spider-Man. Same At the man. same time, same he man. must help the Spider-Man from another dimension along with four other dimensional Spider-People return okay. to their homes before all the realities collide. Yes. This movie was awesome from beginning to end from the moment it first hit the screen. Yeah, so <laughs> much that we watched it twice yes. in a row. And would have done it a third time if it hadn't run out. Right. <laughs> yes, it was a great, great movie. And many people know that it was nominated for Best Animated Feature at the 2018... Oscar. I think it was the, yeah, the Oscars, or was the, uh, yeah, and it won an Academy Award as well. For Best Animated Feature. Yes. Yes. And it deserved every vote it got. Yes, absolutely. Because everything about it is spectacular, amazing, ultimate, whatever else you can add to it. It was just fantastic. And for the people who are big fans of Miles Morales in the comics, and you know, he hasn't gotten that much screen time other than sharing it with Peter Parker when they did the animated series, this was a chance for him to finally have be the, the main star of the film. And for a while on Tumblr, I remember there were people who were doing petitions and posting on Twitter and everywhere saying they wanted Miles Morales to have his own movie. And this is one time that the people spoke and they got what they wanted. Yeah. And I know it had to be much, much better than they ever expected. And I love the artwork. I love the comic book artwork. Mm -hmm. I kept thinking he was going to show up, you know, with the, the shorts and the shoes and the hoodie mm -hmm. uh, when he was all over town being right. Spider-Man, but right. he takes it off. But... I love that look. Okay. <laughs> maybe that's a, yeah, you would think you, maybe that's just a starter one and then they take it off. I, I guess. Maybe they'll do it in the next movie. Not sure. But still, like you said, great design choice for them. So, you know, they all they make all the spider people look different from each other. It's not just a copy-paste exactly. Spider-Man. Everyone looks different. Except, except for the two Peter Parkers, the one in his, his universe and then the one from the alternate. Right. They looked the same except for the hair one was older. Yeah. And when, the hair wasn't blonde. Right. That was that was basically the only difference. And then when you got Peter to the Peter B. Person, Parker and Peter Parker. Like, oh wow, thanks for doing that. Like, yeah, you you see you're starting to understand why he's called Peter B. Parker. He's like second rate. <laughs> he may have been older and he had a little belly and All right. but you could see he had the same morals and the drive and he had the same kindness that the other Peter Parker Right, had. he just had a rougher time exactly. than the original Peter Parker, because you know his story all the time, and everything's great, and his is like the opposite. Right. But yeah, like you said, both of those characteristics are still intact. Mm -hmm. And then you have the other spider people in the other universe. You have Gwen Stacy. Spider Gwen. Yeah, or Spider Gwen. And you have uh, Spider Penny. Pig. Yeah, yeah or Sp no, Spider Ham. I know. I need a spider, spider Pig. <laughs> spider Pig. Spider Ham. Does whatever a Spider Pig does. You finally got one in a movie. <laughs> and you got uh, Penny Parker. Mm -hmm. And you got Spider Man Noir. Oh, I love that one. I wish they would make a movie on that. That looks so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and Nicolas Cage was perfect to voice it. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, they could do a spinoff since they're giving one to uh, Spider Women or Spider Gwen. Mm -hmm. uh, they could do one with each of them, whether it's a theatrical or maybe direct to DVD or streaming for Netflix. They could do like an individual Nor. movie. And yeah, it would be cool when they show the comic book pages and everything. Right. I would love to see. Right, that. and the great part about all the Spider People is that even though they're all completely different, they're all still. Spider Man or Spider Woman, Spider Pig, Spider whatever. Right. They're all the same heroes still, despite the vastly different worlds. Right, and you could see that some they had some of them had the same catalyst as far as losing someone they loved mm -hmm. that helped them to be more of be a better, I should say, Spider Man or Spider Woman right. or Spider P Superhero. Right. I spider person, spider I guess. Superhero. Yeah. <laughs> now what's really interesting is I remember when you got the book from the library, mm -hmm. the 
graphic novel. Yeah, it's called it was, Mo- it was Miles Morales Spider Man. And was there called. was quite a few things that actually changed. Yes, but it was for the better. Right. In this instance. Right. There were some things that could be um, considered not so great, depending on who reads it, and I could see why. But when they did the movie and they adapted from it, they actually, like you said, did some better changes, so mm-hmm. it didn't seem as like this is kind of rough right. or it didn't seem stereotypical. None exactly. of that was in there. Exactly. You never got anything that seemed like they just did this. This is stereotype. You right. just did this like you did in every movie. They made it where none of that stuff mattered. You saw Miles Morales. You saw Spider-Man. Nothing else mattered. You saw the character for mm-hmm. the character. Mm-hmm. And they didn't harp on anything that the book did. And they didn't do social issues. Right. that thing that they're doing now on Supergirl. Right. And I really like that. It was its own story. It's own class. And as I told you, and you were so shocked, The Avengers is the best MCU movie. Mm-hmm. And I know this isn't part of the MCU. Why? But I'm just saying, because it's Spider- Spider-Man, then this is the next best movie. They right. Come this movie was perfect. Yes. Every bit of it was perfection. There was, you didn't seem like there was something missing. Right. Everyone's story was told indirectly. Right. And... Mm-hmm. For those who are fans of these different characters, they got to see their character on screen. Right. You know there's going to be a sequel. Yes. It'd be crazy not to have one. Right. And it was a great homage to the legacy of Stan Lee. I and, mean, this was right. beautifully done. You got to see his animated cameo. Yes. Well, yeah, another one. And then the little graphic that... Yeah, because his, his true, yeah, he, so. they rattled on his quotes, and then they dedicated the movie to both him and Steve Ditko. They were the right. creators of Spider-Man, right. so um, for, that's an unfortunate thing, but I'm glad they got one last big project dedicated to them, this and they was, got to work on. This was just a class act from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't say enough good things about this movie, but I don't have to stop, because right. we only have 15 minutes, right. but... Let's go to the the voice actors. Yes, they were yes. perfectly cast, all the way from the star Shamik Moore, right, all the way down to Liv Schreiber as the villain. Yes, and I was so stunned when I learned it was him because I've seen him in other movies. I'm very familiar with him, mm. and I couldn't believe that was him. I was like, wow, it was perfect casting, brilliant work. Lily Tomlin was awesome. Everybody was awesome. Everything Marsha is awesome. Ali was awesome. Haley Stanfield, I really didn't, wasn't familiar with her, but I really love her voice work in this movie. So mm-hmm. I can't wait for the next movie. Yeah, me either, because this was just brilliantly done, beautifully animated. Music was excellent. Everything about it just full. I want the soundtrack. I want the soundtrack. I want the soundtrack. <laughs> I kept saying it over and over, got to get the soundtrack. You're right. So, yes, when we finish. Recording. I'm getting on Amazon to find the sound. Why? <laughs> now, one thing we got to talk about are the people who worked on it. Mm-hmm. And we have um, Christopher Miller and Phil Lord who helped work on it. They, uh, they, I think, they produced it, the screenplay, the story, and they did a lot of work on it. And they are best known for Cloud of the Chance and Meatballs, but not even more for the Lego Movie series right, because exactly. everything that they do is awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> And then they also have um, other people we know from television shows or Netflix series that we know, like jo- uh, Joaquin Dos Santos, Santos mm-hmm. from Avatar, Laura Legend of Korra, Laura Montgomery, yes, uh, Alex, I think Alex Hirsch to contri- uh, contribute to some of the story. Oh, awesome. I don't know if he was credited or not, we didn't really see the name, but that's because we uh, were looking at all the voices and stuff. Right. And... Uh, yeah, and then they also have them signed up for the sequel movie, which is hinted, well, actually did the teaser mm-hmm. with a post credit scene at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. with even more Spider People being introduced. And then you have the spin off with Spider Women, which I guess will be starring Gwen Stacy, and then all the female uh, Spider People in the I'm universe. The yeah. yeah. So let's definitely talk about the animation. This was some top level different animation than we've ever seen especially when they use the animation to let you know that they were having problems Mm -hmm. staying in the universe they were not supposed to be in yeah and the animation for the characters it looked like some of it was actually um not stop motion 
Duh. Uh, CG, well, CGI, uh, or you mean like photorealistic? Not photorealistic, but when well, they put the... It's hard to imagine. When they put the oh, you mean on. motion capture. Thank you, duh, motion capture. Yeah, a lot of it looked like it was motion captured. Was it? And you know, I'm not sure. That's the one pe thing people are really stunned about. Because it was so fluid. Yeah, fluid you so can't fluid. tell. It doesn't look like an animation that's either been used in a while or one that we've seen before. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they actually have a whole 10-minute video. Maybe it's a bonus feature when you buy the DVD because we saw it as a rental, a digital rental. I think they wanted to make it look like you were in a comic book, but it wasn't, um, they, they kept using different styles. Right, true. Uh, some of it had motion blur, some didn't. They didn't use uh, squash and stretch for everything except for maybe for the spider spider ham because he was from a cartoony world. Right. And, and 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 they uh, have for Spider-Man Noir look like a noir movie. Penny Parker looked like an anime. And everything was designed differently but with this unique style of animation. Mm -hmm. It was brilliant. I, I loved it. Again, it was beautifully animated, beautifully drawn. Beautifully done. I can't say enough great things about this movie. And again, I am just excited and can't wait for the next one. Let's talk about yeah, the this. CG. Oh, yeah, what's CGI? You're right. Go ahead. Let's talk about the big box office muscle this movie did. It cost $90 million to produce. Mm -hmm. And to date, it has made over $370 million. So yes. that means over four times what it took to make it yeah i mean it, like box I said, office power right like i said it, de it deserved it deserved everything in all the awards the attention everything the art because like it's one of the best spider-man or spider people movies of all time mm -hmm, definitely and it's the first theatrical animated one yeah so they i think came so on a really big way with this movie Right, and they did so much more than what they could have done with uh, the live action. You know, live action is oh, slightly definitely. limited. Even the MCU will still love Spider-Man Homecoming, but mm -hmm. you know they have certain limits. Right. Well, the animated one, they could do all these crazy moves, dynamics. Mm -hmm. Everything could be done because they just have to draw it. Right, definitely. And they also, another clue, uh, what they have uh, for the story, dealing with the alternate realities which we actually have seen that method done mm -hmm. for the villain's motive for accessing the alternate reality you've actually seen that motive done with uh voltron yes and you know and the funny thing is i, I can't help but laugh when people said that didn't make sense it was weird but spider-verse did the exact same thing right well, what's the difference go it didn't really go into consciousness and well, yeah, and that's the only difference. The, you know, where all beginning of the universe. Began. Yeah, I think it got a little too. Um, uh, you want to say advanced or scientific <laughs> for what most people want to see in an anime? Right. So I guess they series. just like the concept, right? But as far as being the detail, they rather just see the concept and what this movie did rather than the full advantage of Voltron. And then on this, but, you also had all the action, mm -hmm. and you had characters that. Again, there are people who like these different versions of the mm -hmm. spider superhero. Right. So they got to see their favorites on screen. And that probably made it a lot more easier for them to sit and actually want to take in what was going on. Right. So, all in all, it was a fantastic movie. If you haven't Definitely. seen this movie, buy it now or rent it now. Like or stream we're going it now. to buy it. And the soundtrack. Yes, because it is one of the greatest animated movies, one of the best Spider-Man movies, one of the best Marvel movies, everything. I know Stan Lee is so proud of uh, this movie has done just exponentially well. Definitely. So thank you, Stan Lee. Again, this was your, your terrific sign-off. Mm -hmm. And... It just makes us miss you more. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. So thank you so much for watching. Oh, and tell us who your favorite spider person was in the comments. We know a lot of you have seen this loony cat. So let us know what impressed you most in the comments below. Yes. I'm Ask Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does it ever. It's on you, man, it's on you. Yeah, they're in my dreams, she was my queen. A castle in the mountaintops, rivers and streams. Plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give it to you later on in the form of a locket.